All right, we are recording and I think I got everybody muted out. So welcome aboard. Appreciate everybody uh, jumping on. I see some new names, new faces. That's awesome. Welcome aboard, Jason and uh, Ann. Uh, glad to have you on and looks like a lot of folks will be joining here now that their alarm went off at nine. Um, but uh, welcome to Power Hour. It is Monday, July 23rd. So hopefully uh, things are blowing up in your business. Hopefully you are uh, getting very close to all of your goals that you've been setting out for yourself. We've got a week and a day left of this month. Uh, July has been a uh, exceptional month. Uh, the first six months have been exceptional. And um, a lot of people putting into action something that is new from a technology perspective and the fact that we've got a uh, tool called the plan on a page and lots of people are using that. I had a, a two hour meeting this afternoon and literally in that time of those two hours when I got back to my phone, I had 14 messages uh, from people and those were all people reaching out. I had more than that, but 14 of those were people following the system, putting things into action. So uh, you're going to see a large pop of a lot of people here very, very soon and shortly. Uh, it's just a matter of you got to keep planting the seeds. And that's one of the things that I wanted to uh, to talk about tonight. Before I do, I had a couple things. I, uh, I meant to mention this on Thursday and uh, neglected to do so. So I wanted to start off with that tonight. And we're going to, uh, I always like changing things up a little bit, keeping it fresh and uh, one of the things that I want to do is I want to have more uh, stories. I want to hear more from you guys all in the business on what the product is doing for you. I want to hear what the product is doing for people in your organization. So that's something I'd like people to start bringing any stories that they've got personally, uh, people that they have handed this product to, or maybe somebody, uh, you know, or maybe yourself. Maybe it's done something pretty spectacular for you and being able to share that because I want everybody to realize and recognize that this business is absolutely about the customers. When it's all said and done, you can get as many distributors as you want, but if none of those distributors are out getting customers and sharing this product, then you're not doing what was intended to be done with this organization. So um, one of the things as uh, I want y'all to start thinking about stories, I'd like to have at least one uh, that we hear from. So, uh, uh, and if there's more, then I'm up for listening to a couple of them, but uh, think of some stories. But while that's happening, the first thing that I want to make sure is, is occurring is, are you taking the product? Is every single person here on Power Hour right now taking the product? Are you on auto ship? Do you have product being shipped to you on a monthly basis? Well, Casey, I just got started and I have all this product that got sent to me. So I'm using that first and then I'm going to go out and get my auto ship set up so that I can be my own customer. It's your business. You do it however you want to, but I will highly advise you of not doing it that way. I would highly advise you to make sure you are at least your own customer. It's very important, especially in a product-based business like we are in, is that when you're reaching out to people, they're going to look to you for trust. And they're going to look to you for a level of proof on the product side. They want to know, well, if you're recommending this to me, what do you think about it? It's like if you're standing in line at a grocery store and somebody's in line behind you and they just, you know, had a couple of uh, uh, snacks or something and, and they say, hey, uh, do you recommend any good restaurants around here? And you say, oh, Lupe Tortillas. It's, it's amazing. Oh, great. Well, what do you get there? Oh, well, I don't eat there. I mean, no, but I've heard other people say that it's awesome. You should go there. Yeah, that's not going to work out so well, right? You're going to not have the same authority that you'd be coming at as if you would say, yeah, I take it and here's what it's done for me. So it is extremely important for you to be able to use that. Now, it's not a be all end all. You might say, look, I'm allergic to blueberries. What? You're allergic to blueberries and you're in a blueberry business? Yeah, I am. Why is that? Because it's that dang good. I just happen to be allergic to it. But the folks that aren't allergic to it, which is like the rest of the population, unbelievable results. So it's not the end all be all if you catch what I'm saying here with this with this story, but it's so much more powerful if you can take the product. So don't use the, oh, I've got a whole box of this that came into my package. I'm going to use that up first. That's not how to do it. That is used for you to be able to hand this out. If you're handing this out in appropriate circumstances, then you're going to get more interest in these products for the people that are interested in health. So wanted to make sure that was mentioned. Another thing, are you taking the product right? 
Nobody raised their hand. Oh, no, not me. I'm taking it absolutely incorrect, Casey. No, nobody does that. So what I want to do is I want to go through what the procedure is for taking the product as officially as prescribed as possible. Obviously, everybody, if you've done it from that perspective and then you've tried a couple of things, no problem. I take more than what they recommend on, on the side of the, of the panel. But I want to start with that because you'd be surprised, my father being, uh, you know, not being an exception here, <laughs> he, for, you would think sunrise and sunset is kind of clear, right? You know, sunrise in the morning, sunset in the evening, but here's the thing. Even for smart people, don't assume that they know what they're doing. Okay, so make sure that you talk with your people. The ideal way to go about it is you have the nitro, okay? With the nitro, you're going to take a milliliter of the product and you're gonna take it uh, down, down, down the hatch in your mouth. There's two ways of doing that that most people go. Some will put it underneath their tongue and let it sit there and absorb in through the bloodstream. That way and it gets into your system very, very quickly. Some people say you should keep it there for 30 seconds to a minute. I'm sorry, I don't do it that way. There's no way I'm keeping that there for that amount of time. So another way that you can do it is straight down the hatch, swallow it, and then when it gets into your stomach, then it's going to get absorbed into your bloodstream, basically the same way that was gonna happen underneath your tongue. I'm not getting all the way into the scientific of this thing. Nobody argue with me on this. I'm just letting you know those are the two most common ways of taking the product. After you take that, Ideally, you wait about five minutes, and then what that's going to do is it's going to cause that nitric oxide to be in full effect, and that's when you should take your Sunrise. The Sunrise is in two. It's either in the 30-ounce bottle, and you pour yourself one ounce of that, or you can get the packets, rip it, sip it, drink the whole thing, and you're good. Okay. Some people, if they've got any issues with the taste of either of those items, you can put this product in water. It's completely water soluble. You're not going to dilute it. You're not going to change the effects of it. It's just going to be easier to get it into your body. Okay. The reason for the five minutes is that it's going to increase the delivery mechanism and it's going to improve the absorption in your body. And that's why they say that five minutes. Now, are you wasting it if you don't do it that way? No, not at all. That's just the optimum best way of being able to go about it. I'll be honest with you, in the morning, I go out and I make it to the kitchen. I grab the nitro. I take that. I actually take a little bit more than one milliliter. I take several of the dropperfuls. And then I take my uh, sunrise about seven seconds after that. And then I'm out the door on my way to work. That's me. At around lunchtime, or right after lunchtime, I'm a big fan of taking the nitro again. Why is that? Because your body just got done eating lunch and your body is working on digestion and all of the blood flow is going to your stomach and it's shut down other systems to be able to make sure that the digestion part is working. That's why you get sleepy. That's why you don't move as fast after lunch. And it's because you ate too many tacos for lunch. That's really what happened. So what you can do is having the nitro right after lunch is going to increase the blood flow and that's a perfect time to be able to take that. Then in the afternoon, you want to take the nitro again. Now, some people don't take it that third time because some people it affects them and it keeps them wired and ready to go all through the night. That's not a very common thing, but it does happen to some people. So that's why they say take it with your evening meal. And you'll again take the nitro and then you can have your meal and then you have the three jelly bean size fish oil pills right then and there and you're good. Now, I can I spread that out just to let you know how I operate. I just took uh, a couple shots of nitro before I got on here. I had already had dinner uh, earlier this evening around 730. And then I usually take the nitro before if I'm doing a nine o'clock call, that's when I do it. And then once I get done with this and I shut down about an hour later after this calls over about 11, I start getting ready for bed. That's when I take my sunset for the evening and I take five or six of those. Now I'm a big guy. I weigh 260 pounds. I'm six foot four. I'm going to take more than three. That's just me. Now, some people take more than that. I've taken more than that. It's not going to cause you any issues on a negative aspect. If you take that much, you might get a fish burp. If you take that on an empty stomach, it's going to react with your stomach acids. You might get a fish burp on that. But if you take that at dinner time, I've never once had any type of burps with that. But I like taking mine closer to evening. And after I take that, I go take my shower and I'm in bed and I am lights out five seconds after my head hits the pillow and I sleep through the night. And this is a guy that has major back issues and a guy that does not sleep well at night prior to this. And that's how I go about taking it. All right. So hopefully that's all knowledge that you already knew. If it's something that you weren't clear on, or you got any questions about that, please unmute yourself and ask away. 
Um, or if you prefer not to do that and you want to ask me separately, feel free to do that. Just make sure that you're taking it right. Most importantly is make sure your people are taking it right. Now, here's the deal. Don't ask them, call them up, say, hey, are you taking it right? Like, of course I am. I would be a dumbass if I didn't know when to take sunrise or sunset. No, that's not going to work that way. A better question is reach out to them and say, hey, wanted to check on you. Tell me real fast. Just kind of, you know, lay out how you take the product. I want to make sure we got you completely dialed in. You're not doing it to be able to make them look right or wrong. You're doing it to make sure they're doing it in a way that's going to benefit them the most. So be careful on how you ask that so you're not making them sound like they're, you know, somebody that doesn't know what's going on. But ultimately, you want to make sure they do that. And you want them to say because it'll be more impactful. It'll be them experiencing it, talking about what they're doing. And then you can make some tweaks. Hey, you can take it however you want. It's your product. But try this next time. And, and stop taking all three products first thing in the morning. That happens a lot. People get in there. They'll take all their product first thing in the morning. They think they got this thing nailed down. Okay, so make sure you ask them that way. It's more impactful. All right. The other reason that you want to be on the product yourself is one of the key things in our comp plan is to make sure that you are a qualified distributor. Okay, so I'm going to draw a little bit here. Let me share my screen so that y'all can see that. Okay, so... Casey, you are recording tonight, right? I sure hope so. Yes. Well, yes, there it is. Man, I got concerned there. I didn't see the little button, but I am recording. Thank you. I just need to get my screen to work. Yeah, we've got a lot of people having issues saying they can't get in tonight, so just really? make sure you're recording. Okay, thank you, uh, Karen. I appreciate that. Uh, definitely recording. I see the little red dot blinking at me right now, so we are good. Um, let me see why this isn't working. Ah, there we go. Okay. So let's talk about the compensation plan and what it takes to be able to get paid. Okay. So there is a requirement. Actually, I'm going to do one better. I'm going to show you guys where to find this. So if you are in your back office and you go to downloads, and you go into the income, that's not what I want, the compensation plan detail, and you download that. It's a PDF file, it's 18 pages. So again, you go to downloads, and then you type in compensation, and then you'll see the compensation plan detail, and you'll be able to pull that up. Oh, there it is. Okay. So in this document, this shows all the different things that you need to know about getting um, paid in Kayani. So the first thing that I want to point out is the requirement that you have for getting paid. So starting right here on the screen here. So what you need to notice here is this first column here has rank in the first column, and then it has what your requirements are to be able to hit different ranks, okay? And that's also going to be able to get paid. What you need to have, this, is, this column is your uh, personal QV, okay? You'll notice that you need 100 to be a qualified distributor, 100 to be a garnet, and then 150 for the rest of the ranks all the way to double black diamond, okay? That is an amazing column if you are ever to look at any other compensation plan and all the ones that are out there. You will see without fail that the, this column tiers and it gets higher and higher and higher just like all the ranks get higher and higher and higher. You have to have so much personal volume going through to be able to reach these higher ranks. You might have a huge organization, but you also have to do a huge amount of personal go out and sell business that we just don't have to deal with here in Kayani, and that is massive. That was one of the first things I asked when I was digging into the comp plan. And so the way to read this is you need 150 points, and if you just make sure you got 150 points, you're good forever, okay? Now, if you're a, a qualified distributor or a garnet, it's only 100. I say just go ahead and focus on 150, and you're going to be good to go, all right? So now how do you get 150 personal? 
if it's your first month in the business, you personally purchased a package, okay? And if you did the small package, the medium package, or the big package, that's gonna take care of that requirement, okay? Because you're gonna have either 200, 500, or 750 points of QV going through there for your own personal. Now, if you bring a business partner into the mix, that's gonna go into your total QV, but it's not going to be for your personal QV, all right? Personal QV, you need to make sure this is coming from either your own purchases that you're doing or customers that you bring on. And you can be your own customer. So you need 150 points for that, okay? So what you can do is if you are on auto ship, which you should be on auto ship of at least the triangle of health, that's gonna be worth 80 points of volume. When you have a prime customer that's on auto ship, then it's gonna be worth 80 points of volume qualifying volume, all right? You're gonna need 150. So what does that mean? You need 70 more points. What's the easiest way of doing that? Go get one customer. You be a customer and you get one customer. First step is you be a customer. Make sure you got a check mark in that box. You need the product, you need that to be able to have and tell people, yep, I'm using this product as well. Now do you have to take it? No, you can give it away to somebody if you want to, you know? Whatever you wanna do with it, but this is gonna get you 80 points of QV, and then you need one more customer, and that's going to take care of that. So if you got one more prime customer on auto ship, you're looking at 160 points doing that. If you just get a regular customer, they just want to try it out the first month, you need to check on what that QV is. I don't remember it off the top of my head, but you're going to be pretty darn close to having that 150 requirement taken care of. What happens if I don't get that, Casey? You could be double black diamond. You can have 25 million QV going through your organization, of which 10 million of that is in your second and third leg, of which 1,250,000, that's purple diamond by the way, is in your third leg. You can have all of that and not have any customers and you won't get paid a penny. Okay, I don't know if anybody's stomach just kind of did a little flip like, oh God, oh, that's terrible. That's how it is. So you know the rules, you know how this works. Now, it doesn't usually happen at that. Where's where it happens? It happens over here in these lower ranks. And there's nothing worse than somebody hitting Jade or Pearl or Sapphire, and they don't get their, it doesn't happen too often at Sapphire, but it happens at Qualified Distributor, Garnet, Jade, and Pearl, because people are new. People haven't plugged in, they haven't come to the power hours, they haven't read through the documentation, they haven't seen these things, and, they'll miss getting that. And when that happens, they're literally throwing away money. They could have hundreds of dollars coming to them that they won't receive because they're not qualified. You gotta be able to do that. If anybody complains, oh, I can't believe we have to have a customer. That's just great. Then this business probably isn't for you, okay? I'm, I'm not even gonna try and justify and explain to you why that's the case. It's just, you just ain't, you ain't wired for it. So if, that, if that's confusing, Come on, folks, you got to you got to be able to do that most basic thing. And that is so trivial compared to what you'll see in all of the other companies that are out there. So hopefully that is clear. In fact, let's double check. Does anybody have any questions on those statements that I just mentioned? Thumbs up if it's clear. Yep, good deal. All right. I can at least see half of y'all because the other half of y'all don't have your uh, uh, video turned on, but I appreciate Jean, uh, Jeanette, thank you. Um, so definitely if you've got your, uh, Rosalie, I know your camera doesn't work, but if you got a camera on your phone or on your computer, definitely turn that on, that helps on Power Hour. Okay, next thing that I wanted to speak about. I heard a really good quote, uh, it was on an audio book that I just finished up, and uh, it, was, it was, overall it was a good book. It wasn't my favorite book in the whole wide world, but uh, there were some really good nuggets that I got out of it, uh, such that I wanted to share one of them with you. And that is asking permission. So many times we have been indoctrinated to ask permission for everything. You, some of you have to ask your boss if you can go to the potty. And I'm not lying. That happens. There's people that literally have to ask permission and get a sign out slip so that they can go use the restroom. We've been indoctrinated. We were, that happened to us when we were in school. 
you had to go get a teacher's note to be able to go to, and, and have a hall pass so that you can go. I mean, it's, it's, it's crazy. And guess what? We're programmable as human beings. It's very, we're, it's really not that hard to program us either. Uh, you can see some really crazy stuff that happens in the news about groups of people that have been programmed to do certain things that everybody else goes, that's crazy. That never happened. It's not as crazy as you think if you look at how indoctrinated we all are at some level. So permission is one of those things that I want you to question, especially as a business owner. And I know most of the population is, so is, is employed by somebody else. That's just the statistics. I'd say it's like 90% of the population uh, is employed by the other 10%. And so if you work for somebody, then you have some level of you got to ask permission. You got to ask somebody if you can go on vacation. One of the things that will help move you along in this business is to get out of that realm that somebody's going to take care of this thing for you. It is 100% going to be up to you and what you choose to do. So one of the training topics I want to drop on everybody as a result of, of uh, what, I, what I listened to in that book was that it's not about asking permission. It's about stating your intent. Now, there might be somebody that needs to sign off on something, but even then, I still want you to uh, see if you can incorporate this into your day, and that is don't ask for permission of somebody to go do something. If you need their assistance, state your intent on what you're going to do and run that by them. Completely good with collaboration. Completely good with running some things by somebody else to see what they've got going on. But too many times, somebody's waiting for somebody to tell them what to do. That's because you're so used to having to ask permission. If you look in the Navy, which is where the story came from, in a submarine, one of the captains of a Los Angeles class uh, submarine, one of the baddest pieces of equipment on the planet, billion dollars for one of those things, and the captain was on there and he was scheduled to work, he was scheduled to captain a specific version of that submarine, and at the last second, they switched him to a different one. He didn't know all the details on it. And the culture that he had set up in his organization on that boat was such that he would tell them what needed to be done and they would do it. And they wouldn't chat with him. They wouldn't talk with him. What he said went. And that was just how it, how it was. And while there's certain times where you need to have that in a combat situation, it's not time to ask questions. It's time to push buttons and take care of what the uh, commander's saying. What he was noticing was it was everywhere. And they, couldn't, they, wouldn't, they wouldn't tell the difference. They weren't allowed to. So whenever it was they asked permission to do something, this or that or the other, it would always be uh, permission to, to dive, Captain, and then permission granted. And then it would go down the chain of command down to the person that pushes the button or pulls the lever or does whatever, and it goes on in there, and then they, they dive. He changed the wording on that. And the reason he did that, there was a situation where they were out for a drill, and he, he told them, you know, all ahead two-thirds. And there's a little stopper that they push it to two-thirds, and that moves them along at that amount of speed. Well, the guy that he says that to, his second in command then relays it to the helmsman and it goes on down to the person that's actually going to push uh, the lever to do this thing and it makes it down to that guy and that guy's not moving. He's not doing anything. And the captain looks at it like, what the heck? Why isn't this guy doing what I told him to do? And he, he said, he asks, son, why aren't you executing my order? He says, sir, I can't. What do you mean you can't? Sir, there's no two thirds option on this boat. And he didn't realize that because the captain just got switched over to this and that wasn't an option on this boat. It was on every other boat, but not this type of submarine. It was a special variation. And he asked his second in command, he said, did you know this? He said, yes, sir. He said, why did you tell the next guy that command when you know there was no way he could possibly do it? He said, because you told me to, sir. And it was at that moment that he changed those rules. And it was no more on a permission. It was an intent. State what your intent is. And it's crazy how that mindset can permeate an organization. And so I wanted to bring that up because it really hit me. Don't ask permission to go blow this business up. Don't ask permission to absolutely launch this thing into orbit. State your intent on what you're going to do. If you need assistance, do that. It's a mindset change. Take ownership of your business. Now, we have a very specific way to go about our business. We have a process that's in place that I recommend that you don't change up until you've gotten in there and seen this thing, lived it, had results from it, and then after you've made it up a couple ranks, 
question everything, question every single thing that comes out of my mouth. It makes our organization stronger. Now, if you just came in and you're brand spanking new and you're trying to figure out where the bathroom is still, that's not the time to ask a whole bunch of questions. Okay, that's let me follow this thing, figure out what's going on. But very quickly after that, if you got questions, ask about it. Make sure you ask. Make sure you say, hey, here's my intent on what I want to do. I'm not asking anybody's permission to do this. I'm going to go do this, but here's my intent. What do you think about that? No problem with that. That's collaboration. Okay, so that's something that I wanted to share as well. Now, I want to turn it back over to y'all like I said I would in the beginning, and I want to hear from anybody that's got a product testimony, either yourself or somebody in your organization from a, a customer perspective or maybe even a business partner underneath of you that's, uh, that's not here tonight um, that has an amazing story. I'd love for you to be able to share that. Tara, you raised your hand. What you got? Or maybe David, one of y'all too? Uh, I'll go. That was me. Excellent. What you got, sir? So originally, uh, when I first got introduced to Kayani, my blood pressure was at 175 over 110. I literally went to the dentist, and the dentist said, I can't clean your teeth right now. Your blood pressure is too high. Wow. Didn't know, didn't have no clue what was going on. I felt great. I worked out a little bit at that point. Had no clue. Went to the doctor. The doctor put me on blood pressure pills. Wow. I said, uh, negative. My, my father even scared me further when he said, you know, son, you're way too young to be taking blood pressure pills. You know, that, that stuff starts messing with you in more than one place. So I said, oh, no, that, that can't be, that, that can't happen. So lo and behold, that's when uh, Sherry got a hold of, of uh, Tara and then I met with Casey. And I'm proud to say that just on Friday, I went to Walmart to actually get tested out. And mine was 111 over 73. Wow. So, uh, 111 over 73. And 120 over 80 is uh, what they look at, and you're below that. That is so awesome. Wow. So that, that's my story, and that's why I have the passion that I have behind it. And you have to be able to take it because you are the car right now. You are the car. To get to Sapphire, you know, they have, it pays for the car, but you literally are your marketing board right there alone. I, mean, people can I, love, I love what you just said there. You are the car. That is such a cool statement right there. I am absolutely stealing that. You are the car. You know, that car is, is it's funny what drives people, so to speak, a little, little pun there, but it's funny what drives somebody and that car is something that people get really excited about and it gets a lot of action moving to be able to get that. Sometimes it's just the fact that you hit a pinnacle. Uh, other times it's a car, but that car is a showpiece to be able to get people to say, Hey man, what's that all about? So that you can have that talk. And then you say, hey, well, if you're interested in making some money, I know a guy or, you know, however it needs to go on that. But with what David's saying right there on the product side, that's it. You need to be the one out and about, especially, if you're listening and especially if you're paying attention to what your fellow man, the fellow person that's next to you in the cubicle or that you're sitting next to you on a, on a bus or on a train or just whatever, listen. And, and when you hear stuff, don't sit there and say, Oh, I'm so nervous. What if they say no, you get, you're thinking about you. What am I going to feel like if they say no to me that they're not interested in feeling better? I just heard them say that they've got, crazy blood pressure to their friend right here. And I know this guy named David Jones who dropped his from 175 over 110 down to 111 over 73. Oh, but I'm not going to say anything because they might say they're not interested. You can't, no, you gotta, you gotta be the car. You gotta be the one out there going, Hey, I know this is going to sound weird. And I completely eavesdropped on your conversation. Don't say you didn't mean to eavesdrop. You absolutely did. Just state your intent. Hey, I need to let you know, I heard what you just said about blood pressure. I got a buddy that was 175 over 110, and about less than three months later, he's at 111 over 73, and he did it on a natural basis, and he didn't change his eating habits. Would you like to hear his story, yes or no? That takes 14 seconds. Could change their life like it has Mr. David Jones. And I'm no longer on my blood pressure pills. And no longer on his blood pressure fills. That is so awesome. That's awesome. Thank you for sharing, sir. I appreciate that. That's what we do it for right there. I love it. Who else? I see two hands raised. I don't know whose they are, but I just see it says two hands are raised. So whoever's first one, go ahead and 
Looks like Mr. Brian Pinso, go for it. Hello, hello, hello. Hey, got you now. Hey, uh, my dad has been on the product for about a year and a half, and uh, he's 88 years old and had a stroke and had 100% recuperation. Wow. No loss of motion, no loss of being able to walk. You know how a lot of times they lose a lot? And I really think it's because of the nitro. Them spigots were opened up enough that whatever broke loose didn't shut the tap off. It yeah. may have hindered it a little bit, but didn't shut it off. And yeah, within uh, about three and a half to four months, you know, he's walking and, you know, he can feed himself, he can do everything. So, and I really think that's what saved his life was those, wow. the dilator having everything opened up that didn't shut the spigot off. Wow. That's huge. Yeah, it is. That's How huge. A lot of, what's that? How old is your dad? He's 88. Wow. Going on, going on 89. So, you know, that's a lot of years under the, under the belt right there. And I mean, there's a lot of people, they have one stroke and it's game over. Yeah. You know, and, and that's even at young ages at 40, 45. And here he is almost 90 years old and didn't lose his, any of his motor skills. So that to me is truly impressive. That's, truly impressive. That's crazy. He's got some other stuff, doesn't he? Uh, yeah, he's got, you know, some arthritis issues and, you know, he broke his hand and broke his arm, fell out, falling out of a truck. I mean, he's got other issues. I mean, at 88 years old, you're going to have some. <laughs> that's you know, all. and uh he had uh kept fighting prostate cancer or bladder cancer for many years and it kept coming back cauterized chemo come back cauterized chemo come back and uh, i think now he's on about eight test results no cancer has returned since he's been on the triangle wow also very impressive yes yes so, fantastic that's my, that's my story I appreciate y'all both sharing. That's awesome. Uh, uh, one more, if there's one out there, uh, these, these are great. And I'd, I'd love for everybody to keep bringing these uh, to each power hour. Mr. Eddie Blacknell, I see your hand raised, sir. What you got? This is a customer gathering machine, so I bet he's got all kinds of good stories for us. <laughs> yes, sir. I'd like to talk about one particular gentleman, 67-year-old, and uh, just the power of what we have. I had told him about our products a while back, and he said, ah, oh, you know, I'm on fixed income. Um, I don't think I could do it. But we were at a men's conference. He came out and he was talking about his knees. And I said, you know what? I said, I'll tell you what. I got something for you that I want you to try. And so just having to have a trial pack. And I don't do this for everybody. But I could see he had a definite need. And I gave him that trial pack. And something amazing happened. This was on the Saturday. Sunday morning, he saw me. He says, listen, he says, I know every." Sometimes you want something to happen so much to where your mind takes over. He says, but I literally woke up, you know, this morning and I got out of my chair and this excruciating knee pain and back pain that I normally have, I don't have any of it. And he told me, he said, I just want to ask you, is it possible that this can actually work that fast? And I told him, I say, everybody's body's chemistry is different, but it's totally possible. And so he went from that to three days later, from barely being able to walk, to he went to his gym, and he did three miles on a treadmill. Uh, I have texts from this guy where he's called me, thanking me, and sent me texts for introducing him to the product because he, he feels says he feels so good, six, seven years old. He did a testimonial. He's the guy that has a video testimonial uh, that you see out there. So that was awesome. I love it. I uh, absolutely love it. That's great. Thank you for sharing, Mr. Eddie Blacknell. That is fantastic. And uh, that that right there is what we do. That is it. And, and Brian just now, what we have is life changing. Uh, Mike Long, I will answer for David because he's been in, I think, for right at three months in the business. Um, is that right, David? Or three months? Yeah. So that was in a three month time period. Um, I can say in uh, in 90 days, not that good a story, but I've gone down, and this is uh, formally from uh, medical appointment checkups, uh, I've gone down a good 10 points in blood pressure. 
and uh, and I've got a little sciatic thing that's still there, but it's gotten better. That's awesome. That's awesome. That's powerful. I love it. Um, I love for it. fun too, before the month is out here, I'm going to go get a uh, another A one C, and that'll really be cool to see what that does. Yeah. I'm I'm very interested in hearing that. I hope you'll be uh, up for sharing that when you get your results back uh, on that front too. That's that's. That's one of those where we we just don't we just don't lose on that one. Um, it's powerful. It's powerful. So thank you guys very much for sharing those. Uh, we'll we'll cap it there. And and uh, if you got one that you want to share, bring that on Thursday for us. And and that's good for multiple people. It's good for everybody to be reminded what we're doing this for. It's really easy to get all excited. We're coming into the end of the month, so everybody's looking at their QV and looking at, you know, how we doing? Are we getting close to the car? Are we getting close to Pearl? Or are we going to pop Jay? We're down to our last couple days, you know, all that. When it comes down to it, if you will simply focus on the other person, all that other stuff will absolutely take care of itself but it has to be about the other person. That is one of the most important things about what we do is making it about the other person. So, all right, so let's get into uh, a couple other things. Uh, this is a little bit different than what we've been doing on Power Hour, but I had some things I want to talk about and things to share. Um, next is talking about Orlando. I want to make sure that everybody is not only aware, but making plans and I want to plant seeds in your brain on why this event is so important. Um, another interesting uh, topic in that book was human biology and how we are wired and how we do what we do and what causes us to do what we do. Uh, to be honest with you, in this book, and I won't try to—I won't I'll try not to get too far into it—but just to kind of give you the big synopsis of it is we're all chemically dependent beings. We have certain chemicals that are released in our bodies when we do certain things. And it's just built that way. That's just how it is. When uh, we do something, you know, that really helps another person, we get a certain, you know, a uh, hit of oxytocin comes out. If we do other certain things, serotonin gets released. Other times dopamine gets released. Other times endorphins get released. All different things cause different uh, chemicals to be released in our bodies. And it's just a biological thing. Uh, everybody's got that. That's just how it is. And one of the key things that occurs is when you, some people are very driven. Some people are very goal directed and it's because they become dependent upon that little drug that gets released in their body when they accomplish goals. And that's what people run for. Other people are better for building relationships and, and having big groups together and things like that. They get a different hit of a different uh, chemical in our body. And so it's kind of interesting. And we talk about personalities all the time. But the reason that we have personalities is we act a certain way. The reason we act a certain way is we have chemical dependencies on continuing to act that way because that's what drives us. That's the thing that we like doing. And the more of that we do, the more of that release that we are more susceptible to that we want that again. And so that's why people that like going on, I'm looking at Miss Karen White. She loves going on mission trips and helping other people. That's what drives her. You know, the money, it's all nice and well and good and all, but that's not what drives her. And she's driven by a different chemical reaction in her body than others. And it's just how it is. One of the huge things, though, is most everybody gets a, a, at some level, it's just biology and the way that, you know, our species is, is that when we are in groups, there's a lot of that that is released on multiple different levels. And coming to an event, when you go to an event and when you leave the event, there is a feeling that you have. And it is a feeling. The information is not the same that you're going to get, but there's going to be some of the stuff that you've heard. But you're going to hear it in an environment that's going to cause it to hit you differently. Have you ever read a book and then you go and you read the book in a different situation? It's the same words, but you feel different because it hit you a different way. At its most basic level, when you're at these events, this information hits you in a different way. And it hits you in such a profound way that it's literally, if you look at the book called GoPro, the seventh skill of the seven skills that this guy who is internationally acclaimed for network marketing genius, 
talks about, and I completely, totally subscribe to, to that because I've seen it myself, is the seventh step is promoting events. It's a skill in this business that you need to get good at. You need to make sure that you're going to that event because when you go to that event, things happen inside your body that is very hard to explain. But bottom line is you're going, your belief level is going to go up astronomically in this. And this business simply and solely comes down to what's between your two ears on this business. What we do, it's simple. It, it, it's, I can't make it simpler. It's plan on a page. You figure out what you want. You come up with a name. You figure out what that person wants. You ask them if they want to fix it. You ask them if they're serious. And then you introduce a third party. Not too hard. But there's so much into this game. There's so much that's simply mental that you need every advantage you can. The more advantage that you have on the mental game, on getting that clear, the better. The better you are at reaching that top box on what you desire. When you go to these events, it's going to cause your belief level to skyrocket. If you've been to a road to Jade, you know that I've asked the question in the beginning, who here is comfortable with what they're doing completely? Very few hands go up. When I ask that question at the end, everybody's hand goes up. And at the end of that, everybody's hand goes up. And what that does is it lets the group see, and you have this feeling of, I can do this. And I'm telling you, that's more than 80% of the battle here is seeing yourself as somebody that can do it. That's why I talked about, don't ask anybody's permission to do this thing. State your intent that you're going to do this thing. Have the confidence that you're going to do it. Have the belief that you're going to do it. How do you get help with that? You get plugged into events. That's why you're at power hour. When you get done with power hour, you're going to have a nice feeling. What is that feeling? You just got a hit of a drug that's being released by your own brain. You're all junkies, just so you know. <laughs> you're all junkies for that feeling. That's why you eat. That's why you like sleeping. That's why you, you know, have partnerships. That all these things. That's why there's groups. We're built for it. We're not crocodiles. We're not built to go swim in the river by ourselves and try to bite whatever goes by. We don't do that well. We're not armored. We don't have a row of teeth that can do that. We got to work together. We have team. We have people in certain parts that do certain things. But at its basic core, everybody does very common things. And that's what we do here. And that's how we get customers and how we get business partners. But when you go to this event, it's going to give you the supplies that you need to be successful in this. Can you be successful by not going to those events? That question is posed to me often. My God's honest answer is that no, you will not be successful in this business long term if you don't go to those events. I guarantee you won't be as successful as you could have been. That's just all there is to it. And it's not just uh, a thought. It's not just a theory. It is, it, it's basic scientific fact on how we operate. If you have a chance to go see the World Series, seventh game, or stay home and watch it on TV, which one do you pick? If you can see the Beatles one last time live or watch it on DVD, which one do you pick? Why do we do that? Because we are built for it as a species to be in groups. And when we're in groups, different things happen to us and those things sink in better. It's like reading a book in a closet or reading it in a very special landscape that you go out in the wilderness to read that book. I don't know. The, the situation that you're in makes all the different content might be similar and it is going to be different because there's things that you're going to get there that you're not going to get anywhere else. But getting to that event, Trust me, trust me, trust me. And I know a lot of y'all do trust me. Some of you don't know me at all. It's the first time you're tuning in. But you're going to hear that said enough that it's very important that you go out and actually do that. I cannot recommend you continuously go to the events. I, I can't recommend it highly enough. So the biggest one that you can go to is going to be Orlando. The biggest one right now that you can get signed up for is Orlando. 
another event that you're going to be able to get signed up here in probably two days is going to be the regional event that we're going to be having in Houston, Texas. So the next regional is going to be in Houston for those that are in the Houston area. This is a local announcement. And it's going to be held at the uh, Houston Hilton Post Oak in the Galleria, where we've had a lot of events in the past. We're going to be there on Saturday, and that's going to be August the 4th, Saturday, August the 4th. On Friday the 3rd, we're going to have a Road to Jade event, and that's going to be at a different location. It's actually going to be at Sarah and Sonia Ho's uh, apartment. They have actually rented out the whole floor for uh, a special conference area that they've got, and it's going to be held there on Friday night. So make plans for Friday, August the 3rd, and Saturday, August the 4th. Okay? And the Saturday event. Yes, ma'am. Can you post out the location, the actual address location for the Friday event for us? Yes, I'll get all of that. I'm going to make a flyer and then I'll set up uh, for uh, being able to get tickets. You'll be able to do that online. So I'll get all of that. Uh, that'll be available probably in two days. We'll see if I can squeeze it in tomorrow, but uh, the day is getting full rather quickly. So, uh, but I want to be able to get that out there. So we have close to two weeks to be able to get those tickets uh, for everybody. And uh, it's going to be it's going to be really really good on that front. Uh, as far as I uh, saw a question pop up on the chat, uh, Spanish PBR on the horizon. I need to check. Uh, there was there was a reference to maybe one on this Saturday, but that was the first I heard of it. So I've got some phone calls to make to check into that. Um, but I don't know that we have one on the books yet. Um, but something that we might be able to do if, uh, Miss Linda Bueno is interested, she did such an awesome job. Uh, we might be able to, uh, broadcast her straight into, uh, the living room that that PBR is going to be at. And she might be able to handle that, uh, if she is available. So I know she has expressed an interest in being able to help people, uh, on the Spanish side. Uh, she's actually doing some work for me right now. And we're getting the I know a guy video and the presentation uh, translated. So that is in in process. Um, uh, and that's happening here soon. So uh, many, many thanks to her for spearheading that and really, really taking that on. So that's been that's been amazing. And she is an absolute rock star for doing that. So um, those are things that are in the works, but I don't know of anything that is completely nailed down for that Tara. All right, very good. And let's see what else. Good. Okay. How are we doing on time? Got 12 minutes. All right. So let's see what else do I need to talk about. So we got Orlando. You need to get those tickets, folks. You need to get to Orlando. I don't know if you need to get a bus. Uh, check Mega Bus. Check Greyhound. You know, get with a group of people that you don't want to fly. And here's the deal. Spearhead it. Start it up. I'll help. Come to me and say, Casey, we want to get to the event where you don't want to fly. We want to save our money on that. Can you help us? Yes, I can help coordinate. I can help put people together. Uh, you can get, um, <laughs> Linda saying, I'm not going to beam in. I'm going to actually uh, drive in. So, uh, <laughs> so definitely reach out to Linda Bueno if you need any, um, if you need any help on any of the presentations, Linda is the rock star. Okay, so if you need uh, assistance in being able to get a group of people together, you, maybe you want to do a, um, you know, a split cost on a vehicle, you want to get a 10-person passenger van and drive it across country, you know, whatever it's going to take to be able to do it, do it. You'll hear David Nieves talk about some of the trips that he made uh, when, when he was first getting started in network marketing, and, and they're, they're pretty awesome stories. I mean, literally, they were putting 15 people in a 12-person van. Uh, you know, they're, they're, they're staying, you know, 15 people in two rooms in a, in a hotel. Uh, people are sleeping in the bathtub. I mean, it's just insanity. But the character building that that does, the – everybody being focused on a common goal, no matter what it takes. You want to talk about some drugs being dropped in your system from your brain when you're doing that sort of thing. I'm telling you, the bigger the struggle, the bigger the payoff. 
That's just what it comes down to. You'll remember those forever. Y'all know when you've struggled for something, when it's given to you, it's no big deal. You don't get that same hit, right? It's when it's like, oh my gosh, this is killing me. When you just know it just can't happen and then you still somehow find a way to pull it off. You remember those events. That's what it's all about. So focus on that why. Focus on your desire, what you put on your plan on a page. Make sure you write that on every single plan on a page that you fill out. That's part of it. When you do this, it causes certain things to happen in your brain. Make sure you're writing that out. Make sure you're looking at that. Make sure it's something that when you see that, there is no going back. There is no fallback position. There is no retreating. It is, I must accomplish this. Figure out what that is for you. Put that in your plan on a page. Put that on your why box and look at it. Say it out loud freak the neighbors out, tell everybody what it is and, and become obsessed about that. And when you're obsessed about that, I promise you, you will feel such a reward and such a payoff for going towards and fighting for your dreams, plain and simple. If you don't have any of those, if, if you don't have a big desire on that, guess what's going to happen? Not much. Not a whole lot's going to occur in your day. It's going to look just like the last one did and the one before that and the one before that and the one before that where not much happened. Where you got up, punched a clock, asked permission to go to lunch, asked permission to leave, asked permission to go on vacation. No, don't, don't do that. Come up with what you desire, state your intent, and go make it happen. This system, I'm telling you, it is, it's not theory. It's not theory, and these Road to Jades are making a big impact. They're getting people the confidence that it takes to be able to go do this. If you haven't had a chance to attend one, it, there's a recording of one that we did a week ago that's online right now on the Power Hour webpage. You can take a look at that. Reach out to me. Say, Casey, I didn't get to attend that. I want to know what this Road to Jade is all about. I will sit with you. I'll, if you're anywhere within driving distance, we'll meet up. If you are in a different area geographically, we'll do it on uh, a Zoom. I will walk you through it. I will make sure that you know what it is that we do. So just all you have to do is make the decision that that's what you want to achieve and reach out for it. All right, in our remaining time, let's open it up for anybody that might have any questions or an example of what they've done on their plan on a page, anything that they want to run by and say, hey, what would you do on this? Or how does this sound? Or did I do this in a, in a way that, can you find any ways to improve it or, you know, anything like that? I'd love for somebody to unmute themselves and give us a situation on what they've done here recently. Well, Casey, I'll share with everyone. Um, I'm uh, getting ready to go to a class reunion here next weekend and well, a couple of weeks and I actually reached out, uh, put something out on a Facebook page asking who was going to be attending and have basically reconnected with about 40 of my classmates that I didn't even have on my list of about 1,500 people. Wow. Just added eight new pages to her list of people that she's got a heck of a connection to, and now it's just a matter of rebuilding it. That is absolutely awesome. So if you're thinking about skipping that next family reunion or that next uh, high school reunion or any way of getting together with anybody else, Guess what? Those people need what it is that we're offering. Casey, I really don't want to go hang out with those people. You know, all that. No, that's about you. That's about you. Is this about you or is it about them? Make it about them. And if it's about them, then you're going to reach out to them. That's just powerful. That's really good. That's a, I love that as a, a neat way to get in touch with, with more people. That's awesome. Thanks for sharing that, Karen. Somebody else. Sharon Walker, how about you? How are things going with your plan on a page? Let's see if I can get you unmuted here. There you go. There we go. I can hear you. Um, it's going well. I'm reaching out to people that I haven't talked to in a long time uh, through your encouragement. Otherwise, I probably wouldn't even have thought of them. So you, you're given great ideas, and these power hours are powerful. Wonderful. That, that uh, is a wonderful compliment. I'm glad to hear that. And I'm glad to hear that that was uh, working out for you. When, yeah. you're, 
when you're having these chats, how does the rapport step, how's that working? Are you, um, do you know enough or, or remember enough about them to be able to take a guess on which box you're checking or are you figuring that out in conversations with them? I usually know enough about them that I take a guess and then when I am having the conversation, um, you know, I'll ask them, so how is business going if I think it's wealth or, um, you know, opposite if it's for health. Yeah, that's awesome. That's a really good way of doing that. That's a really good way. And when you're doing that, are you, how far do you dig in? Are you, are you having a conversation where it gets, you know, pretty personal with them about that? Or do you just kind of hit it at the top level and they say one or the other and they, then do you go for it? How, how, tell me how that. It depends. Works. It depends on the person and, um, you know, we call it the terrorist stage where I do have a lot of terrorists speaking in my ear. So I'm a little bit slower at um, getting to the point. So um, I'm working on getting more direct with some of my um, outreaches. Cool. I like it. I and like the it. The terrorist yeah. thing is tough. It's in full effect all the time, isn't it? It is. It is. Until you get um, some, some success, I think, with a few people then then it becomes more you know you can take a breath like okay I, I can do this that's it right that's the key statement right there is I can do this I was working with somebody and he says what do you think the key to being successful in this business is and I said it's a it's a matter of, of bringing other people to the table and then making sure that they can see themselves being successful in this if you can help somebody become successful and if they see themselves yeah to do this they'll take more action and that's how your organization will continue to grow that's not your job to be able to do that. that's my job to be able to do that your job is to get them here if you can get them here then i will get them over the hump and if i get them over the speaking hump which, we will take action yes ma'am speaking yes. of which um a question came up on on a pbr that my sister hosted last week up in dallas mm -hmm. if you have not mentioned anything at all you haven't even you know done any peaking but the pbr is in two days How do you get, invite somebody to a pbr that knows nothing or an event or a regional or you know anything that would be you know meeting somewhere and so, getting together and learning about the business and you broke up a couple a couple times there but i think i got the gist of it is would you invite somebody to an event if they know nothing about anything they haven't been peaked any of that here's what i i would right. i wouldn't and here's why because there's an ambush effect that somebody's going to feel you break trust with that person you couldn't tell them why they were coming and then all of a sudden you're going to uh, uh, drop a, a business opportunity on them. doesn't matter that it's the greatest opportunity ever. They won't get past the ambush, and that's the word that's used. And an ambush is one of the worst things that can happen to somebody, if you think about it, is that they were completely caught unaware, surprised, with their pants down, and then they got shot. That's basically what happens in an ambush. Nobody likes participating in one of those. And that's the people that think it's about the information for somebody to see. And they're hoping that they're just wild and dazzled so much that they're going to say yes to that. Somebody does that to me. I want to beat them to death. I don't want to join their business. So well, there's a couple of people we did it wrong for then. Yep. And that's okay. Now here's the deal. Have I ambushed people before in this business? hundred percent. I didn't know any better. I just didn't, I mean, I was like, hey, just come over. You just come see, just just show up, man. I'll take care of every, I was passionate. I was pumped up, you know, didn't mean to, but I did. So, okay, um, would you have already had somebody do a three-way with you and then invite them to an event? Personally, the way that I operate my business now is yes, I would want to be able to get them on so that I can have that chat to inoculate them so that they come in without any concern about being an ambush. Let them know it's about them. Identify what it is that they want. And if I can figure out what they want, and this PBR might be something that helps them get there, 
by all means, let's go, man. Come over. You need to see this thing because it's going to help you towards the thing that you just told me about. I can offer that as a suggestion, as an influence to you that what you're looking for, what you're trying to achieve, I can help you get that. And the information for that is at this event. It's a beautiful thing. I didn't tell them anything about it, but I let them know it's about them. It was still, even when you ambush them and you want to, you're doing it for them, you want them to see the information. The problem is it ain't going to come across that way. Their terrorist is going to take off running. Yeah. They're going right. to I mean, we saw, it. we saw it in action. As soon as the uh, presenter stopped speaking, they stood up and shut themselves to the door and said, thank you. We'll see you later. <laughs> and y'all like, well, what just happened? Yeah. Like all the yeah. oxygen left with them in the room. It happens. It absolutely right. happens. Right. And it, it, it's not a fun situation. And those are the learning experiences. That's what you go through. But yeah, ideally what I would, and, that, and that's plenty of time. If somebody's got something coming up in 48 hours, that's a lifetime in this business to be able to reach out to somebody and get them through the process. I mean, literally you can get somebody through the entire process in about two hours worth of doing. Now it's just a matter of how long it takes to get through all those two hours worth of work. So you figure you got about an hour for a presentation. I like to have about that 30 minute conversation beforehand to figure out about them, make it about them, lay it down, have the inoculation chat with them, see if they're interested and then get them to the information at the presentation by inviting them to come see that. And then another 30 minutes for answering questions, getting enrolled, overcoming any objections, those types of things. But when it's all said and done, it takes about two to three hours for somebody to go from start to finish when it's all said and done, all the different parts stacked together. It's about that amount of time. Then it's just a matter of how long do you have to go through, how spread out is that two hours of work? You know, I can, I can write a paper in two hours. I can make it last. I remember college, I can make it last a whole semester before I actually sit down and do what I need to do. <laughs> it's called procrastination. Or sometimes it's just how the time fits and you've got other things going in. So it's just a matter of how, how much you can, but in 48 hours, you can get through a lot with somebody if you've got an event coming up and you want to get them over to be able to see that. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. Karen, did you have something you want to add to that? Okay. I saw you come on mute. I didn't know if you had something to add. Very good. Very good. Very good uh, question. And uh, I'm, I'm glad you're getting a lot out of power hour. So help us spread that word. Help get that word out to as many people so that we can continue this process where more and more see this and can execute this and can continue on. All right. Any last questions before we wrap it up for the night? Awesome. All right. Well, thank you all very much for joining. We will see you on Thursday. Make sure you invite everybody to that. You'll see um, links going out for the, um, for the regional. I'll make sure those get posted here in the next 48 hours. So you'll be able to see that. And with that, I hope y'all have a wonderful evening. I'm going to unmute the line so everybody can say good night. Thank you. Good night. Thank you, Casey. Thank you. Thank you, Casey. Good night. Good night.